Hi, I'm Joe from JH Leather, and in this make along video, I'll be showing you how to create this removable pen holder. Let's get started. So the first thing we are going to do is print off our patterns and we want to make sure we do that at 100%. We can then roughly cut these out and reinforce them onto some card. Now you can also get this pattern pack as an acrylic template if you want to make a lot of these and just want something a bit more durable. Now once you have your patterns reinforced you can accurately cut them out. Once you have your pieces cut out, we are now ready to get our leather and we're going to start by cutting out the backing. Now, all the information about the leather used is included in the information pack that comes with the patterns. So what we're going to do is transfer our main outer body pattern on to our backing leather. And then we can accurately cut that out. So that the elastic fits nicely once we have finished making our pen case, we want to actually sink that into the leather a bit. So what we're going to do is mark on the two squared ends onto the flesh side of our backing piece. And then using a stitch groove, we're going to draw around the three sides of those squares. Giving us a nice groove to work with. We can then use a French shave to reduce the thickness here. Now, because we are working on the flesh side of the leather, this can be a bit hard. And even though this tool that I'm using is incredibly sharp, it still found it quite difficult working through the leather that I had chosen for the backing. So we want to reduce the thickness of the leather here, ideally to around half thickness. And we're going to be doing this on both ends of our piece. And so you can see the elastic fits nicely in this area. There will still be a lump, but not as much as before. So we can now start cutting our leather for the front of our pen case. So we need two pieces for this, and we're going to start with the front pocket. Now we want to put that face down onto the flesh side of our leather, and we're going to draw all the way around that. Now I'm using a prototype pattern here, but on your one, you have the turnover marked on, which you can transfer onto your piece. We can then skive this area. So we want to go from just behind the middle line mark and skive out to nothing. And this is going to give us a nice turnover. And if you need to, you can do a test like I am doing right now, just so you can see what your fold over is going to be like. And if you need to reduce any more material. And it's also a good idea to have your leather stuck down onto your skiving block with some tape just to make everything easier as it will be held in place. Now, if you want to learn more about skiving, I do have a whole video on skiving, which I will link at the end of this video and in the description. Once you are happy, you can then apply some glue to the edge of your leather and get this ready to stick down. Now the glue I'm using is Eco Stick 1816B. Once your glue has gone tacky, you can then fold that edge over and line it up with the edge of your tape. You can then go over that with a roller to get that edge nice and flat. We can now draw around our larger pattern onto the flesh side of another piece of our chosen front leather. We want to make sure we add in those two square cutaways because we don't want to end up with any glue there. 
We can now apply a glue to this part of our leather. And like I said, being careful not to get any in that square part that we marked on. We can now do the same on our backing piece, making sure that we don't get any glue in those square areas that we skived down earlier. Once your glue has gone tacky, we can now stick the two pieces together, making sure we get both bits lined up as we drew them onto the leather. We can now trim off the excess and you should have something that looks like this. Now with our pattern, what we're going to do is mark on where that front pocket needs to go. So I'm going to transfer the mark with my pointed awl. And then use a silver pen just to make that a bit more clear for me to see. We can now apply glue to our front pocket. As well as to our main body. We just want to put that on the edges there. Once our glue has gone tacky, we are now ready to stick the two pieces together, making sure we get our front pocket lined up with the marks that we put on earlier. You can then use a roller or a hammer to make sure that the two pieces are stuck nicely together. And again, we can now trim any excess leather that there is. Now, as I am using a mix of different types of leathers, what I'm gonna do is actually use edge paint on this. So for now, what I'm gonna do is apply just a thin layer just to get some color into the edges. Once I've done that, I'm going to put a crease line on and I am using a 1.5 millimeter fixed crease for this. And once we've done that, we can now draw a line all the way around with our dividers. Now, my stitching line is at three millimeters or one eighth of an inch. And we're going to go all the way around with this. Now we have that line marked on, we can do our stitch marking. So I'm using my 3.38 millimeter pricking irons. I'm gonna hit them all the way through. So your pen cover should now look a little bit like this and we can now get our elastic ready. So we're gonna cut that to length and the elastic that I use as well as the length is included in the information pack. And once we have done that, we can now get that ready to put in it to our case. So with our scratch all, we're gonna put that in between the two layers in the area that we skived. Now this should be quite easy to do because remember we didn't put any glue there and you want to make it so that you can easily get your elastic in between the layers. And once you have, you can put that in. And you want to just put your pattern on just to make sure that your elastic is in the correct area. And if needs be, you can use your scratch wheel to remove the leather a little bit more just to make that fit nicely.
Now mine fitted in here really well without the need of any extra glue or tacks. And so that is the end that I'm going to start my stitching on to make sure I get that elastic nice and secured early on in the stitching. So I'm going to be using the saddle stitch method and I'm going to start with one back stitch. And once you've done your back stitch, you can then stitch towards you the rest of the way around your piece. Now you will see that I'm using an awl here on this bit where the elastic is, and that is to help my needles go through. Elastic can be a bit of a pain to stitch without an awl, which is why I recommend using one at this point. And once your elastic is stitched in, I want you to stitch all the way around to just about where the elastic is going to sit in on the other end of our pen case. Once you get to that point, you can then get your scratch rule and we're going to put that in between the layers of our leather like we did earlier so that we can insert the other end of our elastic. And again, you can use your pattern to make sure the elastic is in the correct place. And then you can continue stitching. Again, as I'm at the elastic end, I will be using my awl to help my needles get through here. And then what we're going to do is finish stitching our pen case, finishing with one and a half back stitches. You can then trim the ends of your threads. And if you, like me, used a man-made thread, like a polyester thread, you can then melt the ends with a lighter. Attentively, you can use a dab of PVA glue. So we can now start to do our finishing touches. So I'm going to sand the edges of mine to get them nice and even, and then go over once more with my creaser. So the elastic can get in the way a bit at this part, so you can just move that around to make it easier for you when doing your creasing. We can then apply some more edge paint, And then using a bone folder, we can put that in that front pocket and remove any excess glue. And then once you're happy, you can put your pen into its new pen case. And the great thing about this is that because it has the elastic band around it, it can fit a variety of notebook sizes. Now, if you need it to fit a larger or a smaller notebook, you can add more or less elastic. And so that is it for this video. Hopefully you now have a fancy pen holder like this one that you can use on all your notebooks. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click that thumbs up button to let YouTube know and to help spread this video to more crafters. So thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next video.